Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Dad and the Jiu-Jitsu Kid. And today we are just going to be flying solo. Uh, Ryan had a, a prior commitment with um, some friends and he is sitting this one out. I actually asked him to sit this one out. He, One of the things that, uh, uh, that I liked about it is that uh, he wanted to come do the show. Um, but most importantly, I just said, I said, hey, you have to... Um, it was my fault. I scheduled the, the podcast without um, uh, taking to him into consideration on this. And it was a huge lesson for myself and a really big lesson, as I think, as a dad and as a parent was that uh, um, is sometimes you do need to include your kids on something, especially when your kid is your partner in whatever project you're working on. And so he's sitting this one now been not, and actually too was a really awesome episode. Um, one of the most exciting episodes that I've had in a, in a while, uh, with a gentleman that I've known for 20 years. Um, he is a, uh, he's actually a coworker, um, and a huge leader in the company that I work for, uh, Mr. Cliff Woodbury, who's was an awesome time sitting down with him and never have a, not enough words to express how fun it is to sit with him and his, his words and his, how wise and, um, Sometimes I probably think uh, um, I don't want to make him uncomfortable, but but yeah, he's a great leader. He's something. He's a great. I always tell him he's a great mentor of mine, and I really uh, appreciate everything he's taught. So, but today we covered a lot of cool stuff and a lot of amazing things that we never take into thought when we plan our our year out. And and I'm sure tons of us already gone through our planning stages. If if it's not business, through gone through planning for our 2019 um, goals. But sometimes we don't know how to get there and sometimes we need help getting there and we need help if we're struggling. And Cliff is an awesome coach. Now, uh, I've sat down with him and been trained by Cliff um, and uh, it's a huge uh, opportunity for if you're needing a life coach. Uh, there's, uh, we talk about uh, life coaching, parenting and him being a parent and a grandparent and getting his ideas on things and his advice on things was really cool to sit down with him. But, uh, sorry guys, but also too, if you're the first time listener, don't forget, um, to hit the subscribe button, follow us on iTunes and, uh, give us a five star rating there. It helps the show out and it helps boosting our, um, you know, getting our, our name out there. I mean, we're, we're getting a lot more popular and, uh, it's, thank you so much for everybody that's been along with us since the beginning and those coming along and, uh, those people that are just kind of finding us. Uh, so also too, don't forget we're also available on YouTube, uh, dad and the jujitsu kid and come, don't forget to check us out on the website, at dad and the jujitsu kid.com and uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google play dad and the jujitsu kid. And don't forget to follow Ryan on Instagram too. And, um, on Instagram for dad and the jujitsu kid. It's always everything's dad and the jujitsu kid. So just look that up. Okay, guys. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for listening again. Enjoy episode 22 and um, hope you enjoy it. What is this? The show is about <laughs> nothing. It's about a man. And this kid. Does he have superpowers too? Dad in the jujitsu kid. He's, he's just a special kid. You are now DQ. Fight. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dad in the Jiu-Jitsu Kid. And actually, unfortunately, um, today is just the dad. Um, uh, and it's actually really great, uh, not just a topic, but it actually was probably that's the perfect guest for today's. Um, uh, what, what happened was um, we had uh, Ryan and I had a uh, well, we were we, he had a, a prior engagement. And, and one of the things that I didn't do and that I overlooked was that uh, I forgot about his in prior engagement. And so he's sitting this one out and he's terribly missed um, because this today's episode is an awesome episode and I'm super excited. And I was talking to myself driving in today. Uh, we we're recording and I was like, wow, I'm super excited and been super nervous um, because uh, um, our guest today is a, um, an awesome human being, a great mentor of mine that I've had for years. Uh, we've been uh, working together for well, since I've been here. So, I mean, I've been here 20 years, but uh, Mr. Cliff Woodbury, welcome, Cliff. Thank you. Awesome. Happy so, to be here. Thank you so much. And uh, one of the things about conversations that we had today uh, when, when you walked in is 
is uh, you're asked like, oh, where's Ryan? Where's, uh, you know, the, the other half of the show? And I was like, well, it's a huge learning experience. And um, coming from a week where we had a training and and especially coming from yourself, who's been a great, you know, it's always been planning and, and coaching. And, and that's how I developed uh, my career and my life is is because of a lot of the things that I've learned from you. And I was like, man, I really screwed the pooch on this one. I was like, I completely planned something uh, uh, without taking into account uh, my partner. Um, that that not my, I mean, we're not, it's not a business, but he's the, my, my, not just my son, but we're talking about, he's actually the, he's a a facet of the show. Um, he's, he, an asset of the show. Um, um, one of the things is from our last episode is my goal was to not overextend myself and not overcommit myself and not making it. Like I got to put out, we got to put out episodes every week, every week, every week and kind of stick with the original goals of, and it's in my notebooks that we started off in, um, in our conversations too with, with Ryan is like, okay, we'll try to put out two, a week, two a month and, um, we'll, uh, um, kind of see where it goes from there. And so, you know, I schedule this completely without him or not even taking him into consideration, which is, I feel really bad. And it's something that, um, you know, I miss him. It's uh, so weird not having him here because he's such an important uh, 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 part of it because I had like, okay, well, he sets everything up. I got like, oh, wow, where's this cable at? I'm like, does this cable go here? I'm like, oh, no, I don't think the table, cable goes here at all. And, um, but so anyways, but welcome again. I really appreciate you having here, having you here. Thank, thank you. Good but, to be here. Yeah. Sorry, sorry he's not here, but at least he's keeping the schedule, right? He's very <laughs> well. And you know, what was very, really proud of it, of it was that he uh, didn't say anything. He was really kind of like, like, okay, like, and he normally he's like, okay, well, where's it at? Where, you know, who's it with? Let's talk about what we're going to discuss. And my wife is like, okay, hey, he kind of had something going and you knew about it. You know, I knew about it. My wife knew about it um, a little bit more. She just kind of mentioned it to me during the week. And I was like, wow, I really, I really kind of like put him in a bind in this. And and being only 13, I, I hate, you know, I def- definitely did not want it to be, um, well, I'm the dad like, or be the, I didn't want to be the parent in this because this is a co thing that we, him and I have, and I don't want to ruin it. I don't want him to, to not just hate it or have, I don't want to, but I wanted to, to stay along the plan of our goal or my plan was to keep him included in everything that we do, yeah. asking him and, and like, Hey, what do you want to do? And, and he was like, I'm like, Hey, you know what? It was really unfair for me to, um, not come to you and ask you like, what do you have planned this weekend? Or what do you think about scheduling a podcast this weekend, a few days from now? Um, because we have a podcast next weekend that we scheduled ahead of time and it's perfectly, perfectly on schedule and we're aware of it. Uh, so it was a proud moment. I, I, yeah. I, uh, I, I can't wait to hear how bright he beams when you tell him how badly you missed him and how badly I, you needed I him. I texted him. I <laughs> sent him a text. I'm like, I never want to be, with, I never want to do a show without you. Yeah. It's like, I miss having you here. And it's so funny because part of the episode, part of the show, a lot of it was a bonding uh, for him and I to kind of like, Hey, let's share something. And can I, is there anything that I can share with him? And, and if it's via, um, a guest, uh, uh, via myself in conversation. Um, and it's brought up topics. It's brought up topics that we've discussed off the air kind of the, and, and, and to that we that are, that are uncomfortable and, and we've discussed, but also to, it's really, um, created a, a really, uh, this I don't know this back and forth at least at least a back and forth dialogue and it, when I told him like hey I don't want to you know this is this is our deal this is our show we don't want to you know I don't want to do this without you um so yeah so it, it's really weird it's it's kind of yeah. an awkward thing but good but uh, so but yeah how do you I I mean having a, a, a um family man and that's one of the major respects that I've always admired about you. And was that 
you've always, when we've spoken and had training and about anything, it's always kind of based on not just work and your goals for whatever, you know, in the organization, organization that we're with. Um, but it's a lot of it's based on what your family and what your family goals are. Um, is that, is that something that you think, uh, in the, some parents or some relationships at home might be, uh, probably don't include their kid in that. Like, Hey, let's have a partnership. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, you know, family's everything. It has been since the very beginning for us. In fact, my wife and I both come from, from families and homes where that was number one and not that, you know, everything was always perfect, but, um, our family orientation has always been first and foremost. And so there are a lot of important things in life, um, but family is at the foremost, has always been. And to the extent that we can um, do things together as family, bring the family together, it's all about that. Yeah. yeah. When you, uh, um, I've, I, and it's really a topic that, I like having with our guests and I always try to have a, a something in, in relation, uh, especially being fa- fathers and husbands is how, how, how important is it for being, you know, the, the, the male in the family or um, the, the father is like, Hey, we, uh, um, this is kind of the plan that we kind of like our yearly plan. Do do we have, is it, is it something that is needs to be the household? Do you think more as far as organization or is it kind of, or I don't know, I'm I'm trying, what I'm trying to get to is we're not trying to be around the bushes. Is that something that lacks in the home now is the planning, including is, is planning a family thing Is, is family planning our goals this year. Is it, I mean, we're at the end of January. Is it something that, is too late for people to sit down right now and like, Hey, we got, this is our goals for 2019. Yeah. It's never too late, never too late to plan. Um, you know, the old adage, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today, uh, because you can always begin fresh today. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is, uh, not only a good idea, but I think it's essential that families are all on the same page together. And to some people that might, mean, you know, I'll get the, I'll get my plan together and then I'll have, I'll bring the family in on it, but that's not the way it works. Uh, to be effective, you know, every voice, you know, it's kind of like you've talked about with Ryan, how essential he is to this little operation of your, your podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, every member and, and he feels that and he loves feeling like he's needed and he's going to feel so even more today when you tell him how, how you really mm-hmm. needed him. But uh, we all have a need to serve a purpose. And if, every, if everybody in the family doesn't feel like they have a voice or they have uh, something to offer or give, um, then it's, uh, it's, I can't imagine it being a very, a very happy place to be. So family planning is a really important thing. I think at the beginning of the year, my wife and I sat down the other night. We had an interesting experience. We sat down... Um, uh, a couple of nights ago, and we needed to plan out our vacation days for the year. Mm-hmm. And we went through all the commitments that we'd made to family and people to be different places. And, and we mapped that out and it came to 25 vacation days. And I went and looked, I have 17 left. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had to do some budgeting, yeah. some family vacation day budgeting. And, um, but if we kind of went through the year and, you know, didn't, didn't sit down and do that together, we'd have run into some trouble uh, along the way. So, you know, yeah, families need to spend time together. They need to work together. Um, And in in today's environment where there's so much going on and everybody's going in so many different directions, it's it's not necessarily uh, an easy thing to do. So you have to be proactive about it. That's easy. It's really easy to let things get away from you, right? I I noticed that. I try to. And I'm so used to um, planning out my business goals and my business, what I need to do to create or to succeed um, outside the outside of the home that 
it's hard to, because I don't know if I ever approached it right when I brought it home. Like, and we, we sit down and, and we'll be like, okay, this is kind of like, we want to do this year, you know, whether it be vacation or for the next quarter or the next few months, at least that far out. Um, but when you hear people like we need to sit down and plan, you know, it's so easy to be like, okay, we're going to do our business plan for the year. And that's every November, December, that's everybody's talking about. You talk about like, oh, we have a business meeting because we're planning for 2019 or sales meeting for, you know, other friends that I have, like they're traveling because they're doing some kind of training for 2019. Uh, and it's true because for fa- in the family, because I, it, we just started and I've we've never, well, we sat down this year. Um, and, and I try to try to bring it like, Hey, we need to make our family planning. And it never goes over like, I'm like, Oh, like it sounds like boring. It's, I don't know if, I don't know if it, when you, when you tell people like, what do you have, do you have a family plan for this year? Like, no, oh, no, it's not, it's not uh you know, it just kind of like, Hey, next weekend we have dinner with so-and-so like, Hey, it's so-and-so we have this weekend with so-and-so. And today we had a, something, my wife and I today, this morning, we had a wires crossed with, dinner tonight or is it dinner next week? And I thought it was next week. And she's like, no, it's tonight. I was like, okay, I misunderstood. And rather than, rather than like, I know it was next week because I know it's like, I'm not even going to get into that, but um, it's easy. Yeah. Exactly. What you, were, what you were touching on is for easy, for things to kind of everybody's either, whether it's uh, the times of technology everybody's already doing something else. The whole families, the kids are out with, uh, whether it be with their friends and, you know, your spouse is, you know, they're got something going and it's easy to sit down. Like I've, I've always thought it's easy. It's so easy to sit down. Like, okay, we're going to sit down next week and plan this. And then next week turns into next month. And the next month is summer's here. And then you're kind of treading water. Um, I don't know if that's the right uh, analogy I'm trying to get to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really like the idea of trying to sit down, include your family and your plans, especially, I think it's really easy for my mentality is like, well, I think we're, we're going to do this this year. We're going to be budgeting this like this, this year. And we're going to be doing this at the house this year. And your wife's not even on the same topic. Like, no, that's not even, not even close to what I was thinking. And, but I don't know. It's, and I think it's good awesome too for the kids to kind of see um learn at an early age at least to kind of like how do you approach uh, how have you approached your kids or how would you approach somebody that's listening like how do you have a conversation with a 13 year old you know if ryan was here well every kid's different and uh, we're, we're at a place in life right now where all of our children are grown half of them are married we have lots and uh, lots of grandkids and and uh, so we've been through it all we're not living that so much right now we've got a one daughter that's home uh, just recently um, and so but one of the things that we've done uh, that has allowed us to kind of keep connected keep on the same page um, uh, put off things that might uh, otherwise be a problem for us is that we, we do, we, for all of our married life, we have uh, set aside Monday evenings as there's nothing else that happens on Monday evening. We're together as a family and we'll do, we'll, we'll play games sometimes. We'll do some, some recreation sometimes. We'll have, we'll sit and, and talk about a, a topic uh, the, but we, Monday nights are non-negotiable. That's we're together and it's always been that way. And now there's only two of us and sometimes three of us. And so it takes a little, it's the, it's a little different flavor now, but having that dedicated time to the family has always helped us to keep things together and, to, and to have those conversations. Um, so that's one of the, one of the things that we've done. Um, and then, uh, you know, we've always valued our time. Our kids have been active throughout the years too. They've had, you know, gymnastics and, uh, soccer and all of the the different things that the kids do. And so, uh, drive time, 
parent time with kids, which is just a natural thing rather than say, hey, Johnny, I, I want to sit down with you and have a conversation uh-huh. that could be a little more uncomfortable and, and maybe intimidating to a child if you approached it that way. But through the course of normal uh, activity, and that's one of the things that we can do is we, there's a lot of drive time, parents and children. And so we've always taken those times as great opportunities to just just talk and 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 try to listen and understand and and uh, I think that's a, a great way to approach it yeah it's uh, I know when uh, I try to be and it's one of the and I'm sure you've had it and parents everybody's like well I've tried it how's your day at school good okay anything exciting no they're just boring okay um how's and it's so weird when you, I, and I, I, agree, I like that when uh, you and I spoke this earlier this week about approaching our kid and how do you, how do what I do about something? And, and when you mentioned like, let's have a talk, let's talk about this. And I can definitely see how that can be like, oh, like, oh, great. Like what's going to be the topic? Like, what are we going to talk about? And, um, and I like the, it's, it, it's, a, it's hard because especially if they're stuck on their phone and um, nowadays, I mean, at 13, but that's what it is. His part of the phone is part, technology is part of, it's part of their life. I mean, it's just, you can't, there's, it's not going to go away as much as some people say like, well, it's the, I'm torn. It's like, yeah, it's the worst thing that could ever happen if they have the phone in front of them. And, and, um, and you know, you don't want them to kind of like, okay, open up, put the phone down, have a conversation with us. And then I'm stuck there too with the phone in my hand. I have a conversation with me as I have the phone in my hand, my phone in my hand. And he's like, I'm telling him to put his phone down so we can talk. And here's my phone in my hand. I'm like, oh, I need to put my phone down too. And I, I find our conversations now. And that's like where we got to the, what the podcast is. At least they're like, okay, I have his attention now. And I have his attention with a guest. And now I can talk to the guest and hopefully something opens up in his ears about whatever topic we're talking about. You know, we've had topics about with, with the uh, guests about suicide, about teen suicide, about self-harming and about sex and drugs and um, depression and all this stuff that I've never had a conversation with my parents about. We've, it's just never, never once. It, and I know it's probably the era of my parents, how it was. And, and, um, but I didn't want, I didn't want that to happen with, with our kids and like, how can I stop the, so how, you know, what's about this? Like, well, do you know where, you know, babies come from? Like, how, how would you even bring up a topic like that? I've, I've never been taught. I mean, there's a thousands of books out there. I'm sure how to talk to somebody about your teen, about, about whatever. Like, but how can I, how can I bring that up organically with a 12, 10, 11, 13, 15, you're old about uh, depression, suicide, you know, um, how could we, how can I bring that up? And I was like, well, you know, that's a, it's, if this is the a way for he, us to open the dialogue and they'll talk about like, what did you think about this topic? And what did you, we had a guest uh, two episodes, two or three episodes ago and, and, uh, and she was, well, she shared with her, she was a, she's a, a, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitor as well, mm-hmm. very popular. And she opened up and she was sent to where she was talking about her, her abuse um, um, growing up. And we, we kind of talked, got into topics of that nature. And I, w- a couple of days later, I was with Ryan and I were like, Hey, what did you think about, you know, some of the things she brought up and it opened a dialogue with him and I, and um, it was kind of really interesting to kind of, see a, a, a different viewpoint, especially with teen, you know, 13 year old and kind of see how, what they talk about and what, how they viewed it. And now he doesn't have to hear about it and then go talk to his friends about it or make his own assumptions about, you know, whatever, you know, what actual sexual abuse is, or mm-hmm. it's a conversation now that I'm having with him, you know, on my terms now, but I think he, it's, so it's been really, that's been a great way for us to have a conversation, even with my wife, um, podcast or anything like, Hey, we talked about this today and it opens a dialogue with her and I, as opposed to let's, let's, let's Mm -hmm. sit down and let's talk about this. It's so weird because 
Uh, you mentioned with your with your family for so many years. Um, you know the your mon the Mondays, you know, and it's so hard to to. I don't know nowadays. I don't know if we we could even pinpoint a day like where when can we have a day of just that family day you know our Sundays are you know family and church and you spend our time together it goes but man I can't uh it's hard it, I can't imagine how sitting down with like okay let's say let's pinpoint this day is going to be the day and only that every week be the same commitment to each other so yeah, yeah. I uh it, it takes a lot I mean, it takes a lot. And I know a lot of parents struggle in that aspect of, of um, communicating with their kid and not just their spouse, but their kid, I think is even harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of, you know, I, in, in, as I think about some of those topics that you just talked about, those are really heavy things uh, for a kid. But the reality is, is our kids are faced with that stuff. Not all of it. And mm -hmm. we don't know which ones and when. Um, and so, uh, and parents at the same time feel like I need to be prepared to, to have that conversation that you said is so difficult about one of those, one of those topics. And a parent, uh, parents sometimes don't wade into those conversations because they don't feel prepared. They don't feel knowledgeable enough about it, or they just don't know how to approach it. And so that perspective is one of the reasons that the communication doesn't happen. And so, you know, when, earlier this week, we were talking about, um, we were talking about coaching mm -hmm. a little bit and, and the, you know, fun foundational to that whole, to the whole coaching process is listening. And, you know, to go back to Dr. Covey, uh, habit five, uh, seven habits is, you know, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Then to be understood. And we, as parents, want to be understood. We want to tell our kids things. We want to talk to them about things. When we talk about communicating with our kids, what we're usually saying or thinking is, how do I tell my kids all the things I want to tell them? Well, you know, when, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And so kids don't listen to everything we have to say on our timetable. But when they're ready, when they've had an experience at school or with friends or or when something comes up in their lives, they're ready to talk about a topic. But how do we know when to do that? Well, there's only way, one way, and that's to be listening to our kids. And we don't do that very effectively. We feel like we always have to be talking so we don't listen. Mm -hmm. So um, listening to your kids, you know, having that conversation in the car, how was your day? Uh, or or how, how was your day? Good. Um, things go okay? Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of response you're going to get. So one of the, you know, one of the skills that we talked about that is just a skill of communication. Basic communication is just asking questions that can't be answered with a one word answer. Mm -hmm. You know, what was, what was great about, what was, what was the highlighted today? What was the low light? You know, uh, tell me about your, you know, your friends, what, uh, what was really good in their week? What was bad? What? You know, what struggles are, you know, or what great things are happening. And so that opens up the door for them to tell you what's going on in their lives. Then by asking more questions, not closed ended questions, open ended questions, mm -hmm. you can learn more about their perspective about those topics and, or those things that happen. And it just opens up the door, completely different conversation between parents and kids. And most people don't experience that. Yeah, it's really easy to be the, um, definitely not the coach in best parenting. Um, it's really easy to be the the counsel. It's really easy to start off as, mm -hmm. um, to notice the mistake or notice the wrong or notice uh, something that you don't like, and to complete and to start on why you don't like it. And or why something doesn't, you know, it, it, to tell that to tell your kid because it's super easy because I, I, I really see the um, the idea or people saying like, what's my kid? Because I'm the boss. I'm supposed to teach my kid. But I think the uh, listening um, and you mentioned like even if it's if you, even if it's a, a instead of like, yeah, it was good or Do you have a good day. Yes, it might be. 
a five words, uh, you know, tell me about how your day was or what it, what was your, but I, when you, I, when, what I've noticed is when I've taught, when I've spoken to my kids is that there's maybe it might be one word to, but every other, like, okay, well, that's leading to something like it might end to, you know, it's not the end of the conversation. I'm like, Oh, like, Oh, it was a good day. So-and-so got in trouble. Like, Oh, why did so-and-so get in trouble? And it kind of opens up the con- the conversation, even though it might be five word answers now, instead of one word answers, I like it that I like, Oh, okay. Now it's leading into more. Um, one of the, one that was funny cause it well, was not funny, but one of the things that was disturbing one day, um, with, uh, cause Ryan has social media, he's on Instagram and I'm, and I monitor his Instagram cause it's on my phone and I have Instagram because of the, of the podcast is, so I see his friends and who he's following. And so I see like, you know, what his friends are posting and I kind of, and I say like, Hey son, do you, I want you to kind of see something here. Um, do you see what your friend's posting? And yes, I do. And like, what do you think about what they posted? Because I think it's stupid. And I go, why do you think it's stupid? He goes, well, because it kind of, that's what they, they're kind of now known for on the social media platform of millions of people. I mean, who's, I mean, it's, it's never ending. And I was like, do you, do you, like, do you now, do you understand now how important it is to how to conduct yourself on social media? You know, and, and um, on why I tell you, like, no, you can't have social media. Well, with you know, like, without my me holding onto the reins about what you post and about what you want to say on there. Um, he goes, yeah, I do understand because one of the there was a, there was a, a post one day that one of his friends posted that um, they were posting on uh, this is junior high, and they were posting like three. I forgot the three topics. Um, and two of them were, were, who would you kill and who would you have sex with? And I forgot the other one or who's your best friend, something like that. And so these kids were posting this stuff as uh, naming these kids. And I told them, like, yeah, let me ask you. And, and I said, how would you feel if your name was on there? How would you feel you're, if you were a girl and your name was on there? How would you feel if you're a parent and you saw your kid's name on there? Wow. And I just said, and and I opened up and I said, yeah, I, I, and I understand. I, I, so I'm like, so be careful. I'm like, at least I have that dialogue opened up mm-hmm. with, hey, what what was so stupid about what your friend did? I'm like, well, because, and I we got into it more with this with this Instagram, and it kind of led into like, hey, well, did you see what so and so posted? Your friend? Yes, I did. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, now you know. It's different before because when we had when I was growing up, having and there was no social media or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It was you either was rumor rumor mill, or nothing was said. I mean, if there was something, it was if so and so liked somebody or so and so, whatever. Um, it would never get out unless it was just a rumor. Um, now it's blasted out to everybody, and I told him and I said it's more importantly because I mean he's into um, Brazilian jiu jitsu. He's very good and he's very and he's. Um, popular um, and now with the podcast even more I just said hey I mean do you understand yet that you think about it like this think about it you're your brand now it goes you're Ryan Benavides uh, BJJ Ryan you know dad and the jiu-jitsu kid is a brand I said yeah. if you do something wrong that brand you're ruining your brand do you understand yeah, that absolutely. yeah so I don't know if that's if, if now, when you, when you were talking about the coaching aspect, um, is there, is there a way ever a way where it's a good way to turn off the coaching? And I mean, is it always, is it always coaching? Is it when, do, when does the parenting or when does the father, or when does that get, when's the balance in the two? In well, that? you know, some of the, when you talk about coaching, there's a process to coaching. Um, and what we were talking about a few minutes ago, listening and, and, and just asking open-ended questions, those are tools in coaching. That's not coaching per se. And so it's always good to, to when, you're, when you're conversing with someone, communicating with someone, to, to, to do so in that way, to be listening a whole lot more than you're talking. I don't care when it is, who, you're, who it is that you're interacting with, even as at the grocery, grocery store with someone. 
the more listening you do, the more uh, you'll learn and the better prepared you'll be to serve them or help them or, or know what to, what to, what, to, how to pursue that conversation. So those skills are separate from coaching. There's a time for coaching and there's a time for just being a human being or being a parent. And most of the time as parents, we're just being human and, and we love them and we want the best for them. And so we do everything we can to help them. But if we spend all our time coaching kids, they'll recognize that and they won't (laughs) appreciate that. So they know that there's a time for it. When I'm talking about coaching, I'm just talking about helping people Um, you know, whether it's your child or another person or an employee or whoever it is, it's just helping them tap into the greatness that's there and helping them break through whatever's holding them back, whether it's still overcome a a challenge or whether it's just to get better and better and better. And that's what coaching is. So when does uh, somebody look for a coach? Where does someone look for a coach? When does, when 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 does does someone look for a coach? Um, you know, Here's an interesting thing. When, you know, you might remember the other day when we were talking about coaching. Uh, if you're talking about a professional coach, um, I, I listed off a name and several names of famous people, very, very successful people who have coaches. And well, here's the interesting thing. Almost all uber successful people have a coach. And because really successful people are driven people who are always trying to get better and better and better. And they recognize that to do that, they need someone to nudge them, help them, talk with them, uh, listen to them, encourage them, champion them, push them, hold them accountable. That's because that's how it has. That's how we grow. And, uh, and, and they recognize that people who um, are fear coaching, fear growing. They just, those two things work together. And so um, my answer to the question, who needs a coach? Everybody needs a coach. Um, Everybody needs coaching, I Mm -hmm. should say, at some point. And that could be a spouse. It could be a friend. It could be anybody. Um, But we all need coaching. Uh, And so if we feel like we don't, we're probably in trouble. At least we're restricting and holding ourselves back. Yeah, you mentioned fear of fear of of having a coach and and a lot think i think it's fear of um someone telling you you're doing something wrong yeah that, a, yeah that's a misunderstanding of what a coach does yeah, yeah. it's to see i think to fear that uh um like you're okay it might or they're just gonna tell me i'm an idiot oh like i'm doing com- this completely wrong or completely you know so even like with uh with um i have uh uh I use you as a coach for, you know, the business and, and how to, how, how I develop my, um, uh, my skill set at work. Um, and I turn to I'm like, okay, well, how do I, how do I apply that, um, with my podcast? Okay. Well, and I, I, it's, it's the same method. I use the same thing mm-hmm. and the same method. Like, okay, well, I need to, um, what's the end game? What is it? My goal? What's that? I'm just kind of, I'm not just kind of flying by the seat of my pants kind of thing. So when I, when I was asking like who needs a coach um, and when you say everybody needs a coach and it's so true because yeah. either if it's somebody that you can talk to about like, Oh, I'm going to talk to somebody about, I don't know, just being a husband. Um, I think, having that conversation, especially as men is hard. It's a hard topic to like, I don't want to ask anybody for help for, cause I'm just going to be like, okay, well, I, but I don't want to be told that I'm doing something wrong mm-hmm. is the fear that I always had. Right. Well, a lot of people, when they hear the word coach, they go back to uh, pop Warner or yeah. baseball or uh, karate or whatever it happens to be. And they might, and, and sports coaching is a little different than, uh, than uh, life coaching or, corp- or, or executive coaching or uh, um, productivity coaching. Um, and, and that's in part of that is because in, in uh, athletics, the coaches is, is, in, is involved and invested and he wants to win too. Sometimes. You have a lot of really good athletic coaches, though, that really just want to see the person grow and get and and grow in 
in their confidence and their um, and, and their total their whole life. And so those are the great athletic coaches. But typically, when we think of athletic coaches, we think of the guy who yelled at us and told us we went the wrong way. We did it the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. We um, we're 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 uh, grip suckers and we're yeah. you know weak and you know that's not coaching. That's not coaching. That's torture. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, I think that's why some people would fear coaching because they have the wrong paradigm. You know, they have an, a, another paradigm mm-hmm. of coaching. But coaching, you know, I, I think I shared the other day that the, the uh, International Coaching Federation's uh, definition of coaching, I love, I like it. And it applies to, I think, m- many growth oriented uh, coaching scenarios. The ICF uh, says that coaching is partnering with, and you can fill in the blank, a, ch- a client, a child, a, whoever it is, another individual um, in, uh, uh, in, in helping them to uh, tap into that, what, what they have inside them. And um, it's partnering with them uh, to help them. Uh, oh, all of a sudden I've forgotten my, the, the definition. I don't have it with me, but, uh, it'll come to me in a minute, but it's all about helping the person find their way, break through, find their own answers, anything else. So if a coach, if somebody starts telling you what to do, how to do it, that's training, or that may even be mentoring or, or that could be consulting. It's not coaching. Mm-hmm. So if the answers are coming from the coach, if he's telling you where to go, what to do, that's not a coach. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, when you, when you put, when you, when, when we went over that and you had the, you had it in brackets. So I'm like, wow, that sounds like parenting. And I said yeah, it, it was, too. yeah, you did. I, I was like, wow, it sounds like parenting. Like we're even being a spouse. It's, it, and it's super, it, it's really hard. Um, to not be emotionally involved or have a, um, I like when by the end of the day, by the end and how you explain it is it's nice having to talk to somebody that doesn't have a stake in the game. You know, it doesn't have exactly that yeah. doesn't have anything to lose. Um, as opposed to like, I mean, they cannot saying that they don't care about you or, or that they're the coach or whoever you're talking to. Um, but it'll, it, it, they open up to, so you make the decision yourself and you kind of notice your mistake right away yourself. And more importantly, cause I, I kind of, when I, the next very next day, I, I, I kind of um, like mentioned to you, I had a successful uh, yeah. use of it. Um, and the same way. And I, you know, I couldn't believe like how like well it was working because the person who I was talking to, was, uh, um, seeing their own mistake or not only just seeing their own mistake, but they were seeing their own end, the end game themselves. Right. The only way that, well, I need to fix it because this way, and I'm going to fix it like this, or, you know, I'm going to go and, and I'm going to hold you, um, accountability where well, you mentioned it. Like, how can I hold you accountable to you're going to make that? How can I help you with how, accountability? How can I help you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. How can I help you with the accountability? And that's huge. I think when you, yeah. every time you say accountability, I, I always think like, yeah, that's, that's a missing, I don't know if it's a missing piece. Um, but when somebody holds you accountable to what you said, you're going to do. Right. It's also a misnomer too. So some people think when they hear, you know, accountability, they think somebody's going to beat up on them. <laughs> accountability, you know, we're accountable to ourselves. And if, and if we, if it's helpful to have somebody else to follow up with us, if we would like them to, to, you know, that, yeah, I'd like you to, I'd like you to check in with me. I'd like to be able to report to you. I'd like uh, you to follow up with me on what I've said I'm going to do. Uh, that just tightens it up and that increases the commitment that we have uh, in, in accomplishing the things that we say we're going to do. Yeah. So it's uh, people, that's just another one of those words that people misunderstand accountability. They fear that because they think it's who's accountable, mm-hmm. whose fault is it, who, you know, who screwed up and, and that's not what it's about. It shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it, it gets misconstrued. I think it gets yeah. thrown around a lot too. Is the captain it needs to be more accountability, more accountability. I think probably too that there's no when people throw it around and say there's no accountability. I think there's no um, personal uh, responsibility. Is yeah, yeah. yes. Um, that there's no clear definition of what the accountability is. I'm not sure if that makes sense or, but totally. it's like, um, like, okay, what's your version of accountability? Like, okay, you're going to be held accountable. Like, okay. Well, what's like being a held accountable from my job and, uh, society or, and at home, my wife and, you know, I hold my kids accountable different than I hold a friend accountable for. Um, I think that's where people say, I'm going to hold you accountable. And I think they they don't, the only thing that first thing that comes to their head is that guy, yeah, the fear of yeah. something bad is going to happen. And that's external. That's external accountability. That's when we're, we might be motivated to do a thing uh, because there's somebody on the outside. Somebody's going to cause us to hurt or, mm-hmm. or be embarrassed or whatever, but it's the internal accountability is, that is the most powerful it can't be matched it's mm-hmm. when the individual is committed uh to a and ho- feels wholly responsible for what they do and what they say and what they think and how they act and what their attitudes are that's the most powerful accountability is when we're self accountable yeah how how do you uh, approach it for our, on a standpoint of the the non-business end of it as opposed to when you coaching i mean how do you i mean do you coach your wife do i you know just can people coach their spouse it's can dangerous people, to coach your spouse it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a no, of fire. It's just, she 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 can she can smell coaching a mile away um <laughs> but there are moments where coaching skills certainly come in handy and you know those uh, we've talked about those just yes. li- better listening you know every human being especially spouses appreciate better communication, which translates to better listening, true listening, listening to, to understand as opposed to listening to respond or direct or teach or tell. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's always essential. Then there are people who, will, who are clearly in a place where they, they just need to break through something. And whether it's helping them identify and break through some limiting beliefs or whether it's helping them uh, put together a plan, their plan, Mm -hmm. their idea, um, uh, or whether it's just uh, being able to see the forest for the trees, to be able to to get back to a state of confidence and, yeah, I can do this and feeling uh, better about themselves, you know, coaching, coaching in all of those cases can be very helpful. So it could be a friend. It could certainly children. There Mm -hmm. are are great opportunities to coach children. Um, Again, I, I, uh, I'm wary of coaching when it comes to spouses, but, uh, but I I suppose there are times when that, when that's appropriate as well. Yeah. I like the, um, and it's, uh, I don't know if it's, if coaching, uh, Especially, I don't know if the if it's the male ego. I've always because um, I run into it because even when I hear when I speak to friends and 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 um, not just coworkers but friends outside, you know, in, in around my life, um, is it's really weird to say like, well, how does that make you feel? Like to somebody, it's it's an awkward. Mm-hmm. Or how does you? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if it does that. How do you, how would you approach that to somebody that that's not coming to you as a coach or as like be my coach or be, um, but you know, how can I coach somebody without knowing that they're being coach and not being, or not especially sounding condescending in a sense, like, how does that make you feel? Or how does, you know, cause some people, I don't know, some people are just like, just tell me what to do kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you remind me of a conversation of something that happened with one of my sons um, uh, a couple of years ago, or maybe a year and a half ago. Uh, this is this one son. I don't know if I told you about this, but uh, the other day. But I have one of my one of my sons was probably of all my kids who are all great, and I have no great relationships. Right? <laughs> I love them all. 
Uh, but one in particular was always probably the most difficult for me just to communicate with for whatever reason or styles or whatever. Just It was a, more of a strain, more of a challenge than any of the other kids. And, and, yeah, and at the same time, I probably spent more time with him because of, uh, you know, huge commitment in athletics and a lot of shuttling and a lot of travel time together and things like that. And um, so it was always a challenge. And now he's grown. He's 27 years old, but uh, as I said, about a year and a half ago, um, I, I was in the middle of my coaching studies, my program, and I had the opportunity to have a conversation with him. He was out of, t- out of the state, and so it was on the telephone. And I said, you know, I am n- absolutely dedicated to doing nothing but effective listening, uh, you know, just ap- asking open-ended questions, not, as a, not because I was trying these skills out. It was more because I, I truly believe that that was the most effective way to understand him and to, and to help him. Because I think understanding other people is a way to help them. Uh, and then reflecting that back so they can kind of hear themselves through somebody else. And so uh, all I did on, the con- on this telephone conversation was, was li- I, I would listen to what he'd say, I reflect it back. I validated his feelings and I, I did nothing. I, I offered nothing. I told him nothing. I didn't deliver anything. No, no ideas, no opinions, nothing. And uh, we had this conversation, got off the phone. And a couple of days later, my wife said, hey, I was talking to this, this son and uh, he said, you know, he said he had a conversation with you a couple of days earlier and he says, dad is so smart. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> was this the same conversation? Because I, I, in my mind, I, get, I told him nothing. I didn't tell him a single thing. He was faced with a challenge. And I didn't tell him what to do. I didn't even make any suggestion, not even the slightest suggestion. All I did was listen, ask good questions, and that's it. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm super smart. Was that the hardest thing not to, to do? Oh, it's to so do hard. Not to do anything? It is hard. It is the, the hardest thing in coaching. And I think I shared this the other day. I came up with, a, with a, my own acronym for it, but I call them doves. I don't let doves into my, into my coaching conversation. And what that means is, as a coach, when I'm working with somebody, if I bring my desired outcomes or desires for that person, D, or my opinions, O, or my values, V, or my expectations, E, therefore doves, mm-hmm. if I bring any of those things into a coaching conversation, I'm not only out of line, I'm not serving them. I'm not helping them because I, I'm, I'm, it's about me, not about them. You're so, trying to make an image of yourself over him. Yeah. Right you have to be, you have to be completely in their story and with them in order to, to offer them any help at all. And so that the definition I was searching for a few minutes ago in my, in my brain here um, the definition, uh, the ICF, International Coaching Federation, and I mentioned this because I think it's helpful in the context of what we're talking about, is that uh, coaching is partnering with a client or any of those other things I said um, uh, in a thought-provoking and creative process that inspires them to maximize their personal and professional Uh, potential. And that's what it's all about. It's to, it's this process of just, of, of, uh, thought provoking questions. And we, you all remember, we called them, uh, empowering questions Mm -hmm. combined with clarifying questions when you don't completely understand, or maybe they don't completely understand what they're saying, Mm -hmm. but, um, you combine that all together. And then that's when the creativity sparks. When, when a person is asked, uh, a thought provoking question, an empowering question. That's when the light bulb comes on. That's when the solutions come and that's when it gets really exciting. And that's the, and that's why I do coaching to it's see the passion. Yeah. yeah. To, to see the, to see the light bulb go on in people's minds. And then they build upon that and they go down that path and we continue to converse about that, but we stay in their story. It's all about them. 
and I offer nothing. All mm-hmm. I do is, yeah. is, 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 is listen. Yeah. And, and uh, when you, and it's so powerful because that, that whole, the, the whole statement, the, 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 you, the, you, not just, not the statement, but the definition, um, what the, the international coaching federation, coach federation yeah. it's super powerful because it has potential. It says potential. Yep. And I, I, one of the listening to my son, uh, my sons, I have two sons, um, listening to them and realizing that they're both different and they're both every there there's they're both going to be whether it be disciplined or whether they're going to be taught differently they're going to be acknowledged differently they're going to be because uh that that when i've when i've listened when i've slow down and kind of like, okay, what is it that I can help them with now? There's 13 and 12 year olds. And now is the kind of point of where their life is like, okay, they're getting ready to go to high school soon. And once, you know, junior high, um, how can I prepare them to be, not to prepare them to be like, well, you have to go to college and this is where, this is your life. Where do you want to do? What do you want to do when you grow up? Like, okay, they're not, and, and not be into that where I was, pushed into what do you want to do when you grow up I'm like I don't know um but at least listen to what they want to do and that's what I really my goal is all the time is to what is it that they and try to stay out of it sometimes mm-hmm. um you talk to my 13 what do you want to, what do you want to do and um I don't know maybe a year or two ago I want to be a YouTuber so, oh, no, no, you, you're excellent in math and science you're going to be an engineer let's look at engineering stuff at that 12 and then I was like, I got to stop doing that. Yeah. And it's, I got to stop. I'm like, okay, okay, let's see what, what this, um, and what am I, what am I, who am I? He's like, okay, don't be a YouTuber. I mean, they make a million dollars a year doing what they enjoy doing. Like, so why am I saying like, don't do that? Because it's not the norm. It's not the norm of like, right. well, you got to go to college and you got to start at the very bottom and then grind your way to the top. And then do all that kind of stuff. And, and, um, and, but that's because that's how we were brought up. That's how I was brought up. That's the way I did it. That's the way, mm-hmm. um, like, no, like, okay, well, what is it that sparks you? You know, my, both, both of my boys are, are different. Um, Ryan, uh, I told, I had a conversation with him and how funny it was a perfect timing, just the way everything kind of, uh, not this particular conversation, but from uh, the lesson from this week that we had, um, uh, I don't know about how long ago it was. I told him, I just said, you know what? I never want you to feel that you cannot be creative, even if it comes from me. You know, he's a very silly kid and he's very silly. And, and he, and he, and, and, um, I said, don't ever be where, don't ever just along the, that lines of don't, if you want to do something, just do it. You know, don't stop being silly. You know, it's a time and a place. Sometimes I get a little more annoying mm-hmm. than other times. Um, but don't stop your creativity. Yeah. Whether it's creativity is just not just on uh, with the, with the sketch pad and yeah. drawing and art. Um, because one of the things that I was so, uh, I think the, the, the being just the podcast is, is one thing is where like, I just fell in love with just creative just creating like and just like the the facet of i like being creative but i also like the bit the 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 hard work behind it and i think it was because i do everything i mean i'm Mm -hmm. no producer my own everything and um we had a conversation part of the conversation is that is that personality um uh test that we take personality disorder disorder. yeah and when you asked me where do you think you belong I'm like, I'm a D or I'm a, oh yeah, I'm like on the opposite fence, you know, to left field of a D and you're like, like, no, you can make a choice and you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're an I, but you're close to a D mm-hmm. and an I, um, is, uh, outgoing out- influence and that's so extra. Like, yeah. And I was like, wait, and I, you got me thinking so much mm-hmm. and I was like, that's right. I know that. Like, that's right. Okay. I remember. Yeah. It was like way back. 
like, hey, it's right. I was like that. I was like that. And it's so easy to get caught up. And that's why I mentioned to my son. I'm glad I mentioned this to my son is like, don't stop. Don't stop. If you want to do something, be creative, whatever it is, creating something. Yeah, absolutely. We put way too much pressure. I say we, society puts way too much pressure on our kids to, I mean, even if it's just pick a sport, you know, and, and spend and just get totally after it and get serious about it and get, you know, pour your whole life into that. Well, what is childhood if not a time to discover and to learn creativity and to try new things and do different things? But we push our kids sometimes way too hard to get cubbyholed early on mm-hmm. in life. You know, this is the, as you were talking about, you know, your impulse was, hey, you're good at engineering. Let's go down that path and pursue it with vigor. Well, what happened to childhood, you know, and the discovery? Because most kids, given the opportunity, will decide 10 times between the ages of 10 and 20, what it is they want to do and what they, ha- what they want to pursue. And that's, and that's as their brains develop, as they experience new things and new possibilities, as they begin to learn about their own personal potential, all those things come into play and they, they will try all kinds of different things and they'll finally find something, if given space to do it, that they're passionate about. And people, statistically speaking, people perform much, much high at a much higher level when they when they work in an area that they're passionate about than they do at what at one point in their life somebody told them or they decided, you know, was their little niche and felt obligated to do. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And so um, it's, you know, it's hard as a parent to to back off and say, I'll support you in this process. And it may mean you, you have to try six different sports and, and 10 different hobbies, but they'll figure it out. And you just have to have faith in our kids to, to be able to do that. But to partner with them as they're doing it, not just say, hey, go figure it out and come check in mm-hmm. at, at 19. <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of things can go awry at that point. So um, the, a, a wise parent stays close to them through that process, but gives them the leeway to make decisions and to learn and to grow and to discover. Yeah. It, it's a, uh, I know it's funny because, um, as I was actually, and I don't, I don't even remember writing this down and I have notebooks. I have these notebooks and, um, and I was, uh, I found them and, this is like how, when the podcast started, like when I was naming the podcast up here, I'm holding mm-hmm. up, you can't see, but I'm holding up a notepad that I've had and I write my notes in it. And I went to the first page. I was like, oh, I don't even remember where I wrote this. And I, when I was planning ideas down, when I was planning and then leading into um, how I'm going to get things uh, promoted or how to think, but the one thing, and I even circled it, it says, pick one skill to learn to separate from other shows. And, and, and I was like, I, I I don't, I don't remember when I wrote that. And I don't, I don't remember, but I do remember that I have, that I like going back to what we're talking about, um, you know, holding these standards to our kids is, and and I've told Ryan this, and I just said, learn one thing to make yourself better than somebody else. And same thing, like what what one thing can you do better than somebody else? Or what one thing can you learn better than somebody else? Um, And his mind always starts going and he tries to learn one thing and, and one, um, and whether I don't care what it is. I tell them, I just, but be good, be, try one thing that you can make yourself better at, whether it's math or school or sports, um, at home to do and, 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 and bring it and let them know like, okay, what, what are you working on right now? And, and sometimes I know it's like, okay, I'm playing, learning how to be better at, um, uh, um, video game or something. I was like, all right, well, at least he's, and it's so hard not to like, what? That's not what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. But like, okay. That's, you try, you got better. That's at, your story, not his. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was so funny too, because I like that it was a, and I wrote, when I wrote that down 
And um, it was my uh, idea of like, okay, well, how can I better uh, myself? And I like at least planning the idea to his head, like, okay, well, how can I better my one thing that I can make myself better by like that 1% that I can make myself better than, you know, and maybe it, it from years and now it's better. What, what can I do better than my coworker? What can I do one thing better than a competitor or just myself to make me a better person? Um, and it's so hard to, stay out of like what their, what his the one thing is like, I don't know what mm-hmm. his one thing is. If it's going to be, like I said, video game, he did a science project and had, of course it has something to do with video game, something. And it was scientific. It was like, okay, that makes sense. But you know, the fact that he used the video game for it. So I was like, okay, just stay out of just, yeah, that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. You know, you know, one of the things to do with, with kid, you know, it's, it's, it can be a little dicey sometimes to, to say those words, the words to your child, uh, what can you do to get better? Because they may not receive that in the way that it is intended. Mm-hmm. They may think, well, what's lacking? I mean, I'm obviously not satisfying, you know, my parent or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and so, you know, a great way to do that, back to that feelings thing that you, you talked about earlier, is, you know, is to say that was fantastic. How did that feel? Mm-hmm. You know, how, how did that feel? And how can you keep that feeling growing? You know, when they, when they say, you know, it feels great to succeed. Um, you, you know, you, you tap into that and you say, uh, you know, was that a positive experience? Did you enjoy that? Why? What did that feel like? And how can you get more of that? And so it's more about the feeling of success and breakthrough and accomplishment and, and not more about getting better mm-hmm. per se, because that becomes there's something sometimes uh, that can be a little bit of a sticking point in, in, in working with our kids. Cause it, again, it can communicate that I'm not good enough. Mm-hmm. And so, and then the other uh, thought that came up is, you know, it's great to be competitive especially in competitive situations. Um, but our kids, you know, they're, 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 as they grow their potential, it's about growing their potential regardless of what's going on around them and who's doing and who's doing it. So I think the greater, the greatest opportunity is for them to feel like I'm getting better and better and better at what I love to do. And, and good for you to recognize that I need to step back sometimes and let them make those decisions as to what it is I want to get great at. And when, when someone views that as, as the, as, well, is, would it be more natural for, to get the mentality of, I mean, not to post, and I, and I, I see your view, I, I, and I agree, I'm glad you pointed that out, as opposed to like make one thing better about yourself and, and, you know, and also too, I don't want to be like, so like, okay, well, to him where it's like, it always sounds like when people, so especially sometimes people get so like, well, you can't be so, uh you know, soft on your kids or soft on them. And as opposed to like, there's like, well, there's nothing wrong with telling your kid, you could be better at one thing as a, now that I'm looking at it and, you know, naturally I myself want to be myself, want to be better naturally at one thing better. And I, and you point that out is human that, nature. Yes. And it's hoping that, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't say that to him, like, Hey, be better at one thing. You know, what's one thing better that you can do to be like demeaning or anything? Not that he's like right, not worthy right, enough, sure. but it's really, really easy for some kid. Like, okay, well, I'm not good enough. And as opposed to where I'm thinking like, well, hopefully it sticks to where he naturally says, I need to do this better than rather be told like, well, I was told I need to be better. Yeah, I believe that 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 is part of our DNA as human beings. Part of our spiritual DNA is to is to ourselves want to reach higher, do better, give more, more and better are inside us. And and at the nice, the good news is I also believe that um, none of us will ever even scratch the surface of our potential. I think our potential as human beings 
exceeds our capability to reach at some time. I mean, I just don't, I, I b- truly believe that. And I think that even the greatest among us could even be greater they, because they have the potential in them. And so uh, with that's the good news, along with this desire to get better and better and better, because we can't ever, you, you don't ever reach, there is no finish line mm-hmm. when it comes to growth and development. There just isn't. Yeah, because uh, that's it. Uh, when you you bring that up, the there is no finish line, and, and there nobody maxim nobody maxes out their potential. Um, does somebody get laid? How do you feel about? Or how do you, what do you think that holds somebody back? I mean, because you could be re, you could be very successful. I mean, I'm sure uh, uh, Bill Gates is. I'm sure there's. I mean, there's probably a lot more he can do, or, or maybe he's the. Maybe, maybe, Everybody looked at, you know, Steve Jobs as the epitome mm-hmm. of success and um, all these huge business leaders. Is it sometimes people get happy like, OK, I'm, I made it now or is it just they kind of tune out? Because I think more often they, they lack confidence and that usually comes to that usually comes from some kind of a limited belief, a limiting belief. They either believe because of conditioning or because of the the people that they've been around because of the messages that they've had throughout their lives that um I I I'm not good enough because they've been told that might be a limiting belief another one might be um well no one of my height and stature has ever done this before and so I can't do it again that's a different kind of limiting belief it's buying into historical evidence that that, that it can't be done um, so there's any number of things that can cause people to think that. And I think that, pe- that the more people recognize that, I, that pretty much anybody can do anything great given, you know, other than the external factors that hold us back. The internal factors are only a, are a product of our conditioning and the, and our own thinking. And again, that, that goes back to, and I, and I, as I said, I sincerely believe that our potential as human beings is so phenomenal, so amazing that we would be, if we'd be scared if we could, if, if somebody opened the curtain for us to see how much we have within us, we would be, um, we'd be awestruck, maybe even fearful because a lot of people fear the, the, the success. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, re, I really believe that. And, and, and that's, uh, uh, should be encouraging, but it can be scary. You to think the path well. to success is what people fear sometimes? It's breaking through what they fear. It's overcoming those beliefs, those limited beliefs. And, and that's why, you know, I hate to, to uh, sound gratuitous here and, and say that's why one of the great things with coaching, but that's what coaching, one of the things that we do in coaching is helping people help people break through the, the limited beliefs, limiting beliefs that they have that keep them from reaching the heights that they can mm-hmm. and gaining the success that they, they can have. Yeah. Cause I mean, when you're coaching and you, you we brought that up again is you're not um, paving or laying out the blueprint. Mm-mm. You're not, um, not telling, you're not, like, con- no, you're not consulting. Yeah. You're not telling them what to do. You're helping them tap into the, what's, what's in there mm. and, and break through, literally break through almost like a wall, break through the stuff that's, that's keeping them where they are. Is that, do you think people, you think people are held back from, uh, environment sometimes their so, own environment, their people that are around? Yeah, well, the, our environment, which includes the people in it, um, ha, could help us form the paradigms and the and the thinking that that we that uh, uh, that we operate in. And so, yes, absolutely, can be demotivating. It can it can be very uh, uh, restricting, you know, emotionally and psychologically. So, absolutely. Yeah. The, how does someone go about it now? If, if someone it's still early in the year, it's not too late. And, and you had a great analogy. Um, what was the analogy you said about planting the best time to plant a tree is now. And, or the, the best time, the, the, 
best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. If you want to enjoy the shade today mm-hmm. oh, and, okay. you know, if you, want to, if you want to enjoy its benefits, the best time to have planted a tree is 20 years ago. But if you didn't, the second best time is to plant it today so that you can enjoy the benefits down the road. So, so how does, I love that too. That's a great, um, how do you, somebody start now? I mean, if somebody wants to, um, uh, look into a coach to help their planning. I mean, how does somebody, um, it's really easy to find a coach these days. In fact, it's one of the fastest growing, um, uh, careers, I guess, for, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, it is, it is growing rapidly. Um, there are people, you know, any, the, one of the problems with coaching is that anybody can just call himself a coach. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you, what you want to look for is someone who's certified, has been through a coaching program who has the credential to coach. Um, but that doesn't guarantee a great coach. At the same time, um, you could have some people who have been, I, I know personally a guy who does a lot of coaching, uh, has been doing it for 20, 30 years and didn't never go to coaching school mm-hmm. and he's, and he's very, he's very good at it. And so it's, it's not, it's not an industry, if you will, that is, um, that is policed or restricted, um, but a good place to start is by looking for uh, an ICF certified coach. And is is it a dynamic that you have to look at between, you know, if your personality is one way, do you want the opposite personality type of coach? It's hard to sort that out personality wise, but you certain depending on the kind of coaching you're looking for, you know, a simple Google search in your area um, we'll certainly turn up lots of returns, but it, people may be looking for, you know, if you're looking for a nutritional coach or a, a weight loss coach or, a, 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 a relationship coach, or, uh, I mean, there is, there are, if you, I, I guarantee you, if you did a very narrow search for you specifically, the issue you're working on, you're trying to get, you're trying to get some uh, clarity around or develop in you'll find it. You'll find lots of returns for people like that. And so the key then would be to look for uh, endorsements that sound like, you know, people have had great success with those people. Yeah. And, it has, yeah. and I guess it has to be a fit too, right? I mean, yeah. between yourself and whoever it is you're hiring. Um, right. You know, I can't, I mean, sometimes it's, uh, I don't know, is it, is it by what your goal is? So if I, if, if somebody wants to come and say, I want to be a better just, I mean, or do you have to have a topic? I mean, you do don't, you have to? You don't. You can have, so a, what they call a life coach is very general. Um, most uh, coaches who have been through a program are capable of doing some life coaching. Um, you know, I, I find myself in, you know, I just, uh, what I'm doing now is I, uh, since I got my certification, I'm just doing it in our company, as mm-hmm. you know, for some of our employees. My niche really is with our uh, new and some sometimes struggling, sometimes new, sometimes seasoned uh, store managers mm-hmm. throughout our company who got to where they are by being the best uh, inventory guy or sales guy or just the, the most trusted person in one of our stores when a, a vacancy for the manager uh, came up. And they got promoted into that with zero experience in managing mm-hmm. other people. Mm-hmm. And so where they struggle is only the most important part of what they do in, in, in their job. And that is to manage the, you know, to manage, inspire, lead the people that they have on their teams. And so uh, lots of opportunity to help people in that, uh, our people in that, in that place. But I also coach a lot of other people in different uh uh, job responsibilities here in our mm-hmm. company. Um, but I, but I, in doing that often find myself doing kind of life coaching things as well. So there's, as I said, there's executive coaches, there's corporate coaches, there's, uh, leadership coaches, there's, uh, uh, there's a flavor for everybody. But, uh, also I think most people will know somebody who's who's either got or knows 
a good coach and has some good things to say about. So that's another way to maybe even a better way than, you know, jumping yeah. on the Google. And there's nothing machine. wrong with it. I mean, yeah. I think that's a, people have this miscon- misconception of it's or like, I can't, you know, ask for help or that's no, it's not about I'm fixing. Not doing, yeah. 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 And, uh, I think people get lost in the, in, in what they're, because one, I think they're not going to get better if that's what they, if that's what they want. I mean, probably they just going to get worse and ignore the fact that, you know, might, might need a help in a situation or a, a life coach and, or a um, business coach or executive mm-hmm. coach or relationship coach. And um, I agree. I mean, I've always been a fact of like, well, if I can't get somebody, I'm going to look for the, look for help and an answer in mm-hmm. some way. I mean, I think it's a good start, but um, I mean, I can't thank you enough, Cliff, for coming in. It's a, been such a uh, good. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been, I hope you've had a fun. I know I've had an amazing time and it was so, uh, part of the nervous when I was taught, when I was coming in and talking to myself and, and, and saying, like, oh gosh, like, well, finally here we have a sit down have a conversation outside of work and as opposed to outside, like, well, we can have a conversation of just, you know, just a conversation, which was really fun. Yeah. And it's really been really uh, an awesome time to get Good to know you too. a little bit more and, um, outside of our little yeah. organization. But um, again, I thank you and uh, thank you for coming in and I you really bet. appreciate it. You. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Fun. I don't know if that went where you wanted.